G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a quick rundown on this rifle that we were shooting at the beginning of the week. Chambered in the 22250, um, and I suppose I'll tell you the story and then go through the details of the thing. Um, it's really something that I was talking to MDT and their, this new Oryx chassis was something that I wanted to get here and show off a little bit. It looked really neat and tidy, good bang for the buck, and I wanted to get it here and have a little play with it. Um, when I did get it here, I sort of looked at it, we were pretty busy doing all sorts of stuff. I got it here and thought, okay, listen, it's a nice little chassis. It's really set up in more of a lighter frame. It's sort of more the hunting chassis to a degree, but still a good precision setup as well if you do it properly. Um, but for me, um, what was probably going to suit best was a smaller caliber, smaller cartridge, I should say. Um, so a little less recoil, and that's a little bit about the butt pad. Um, I don't think I haven't found a way to make it vertically adjustable, so it stays at this height, which means it's okay. It's not too low, but it's not as high as I'd like to go for a heavier hitter. It's in a short action and a little bit lighter chassis format, but still very well built. Aluminium subframe inside of there, still very strong, just not quite in the, in the heavy hitter stuff. So what I went with, okay, listen, what one I've really been looking forward to doing is the, yeah, 22250, the one we've chambered it in. Now, a lot of people would say, why wouldn't you use the, the 224 Valkyrie or the 22 Creedmoor or uh, I think there's some other 22 Wildcats and new bits and pieces and old stuff. Um, I tend to find that if I go back to the old stuff, that people have walked away from to a degree, I tend to find very good stuff in that place. And the 22250 was one that I really felt was a real, really good idea. A lot of people love them, but mostly they're varmitor and short range hunting, well, you know, moderate range hunting sort of cartridge. And that's largely because they're set up with a one and 14 twist, an old nice wood stock, they're good rifles, really accurate, shoot really well, very flat shooters, but largely running a, like I said, one and 14 twist made to set, shoot the, the um, 55 grain 22 caliber pill. So, okay, um, what I felt was if I go with something to spin that properly and run one of like the 22 Valkyrie, so 224 Valkyrie, I should say, um, but it, or in the, what they're doing the Creed more, but come up into that 90 grain projectile, then I'm really going to get a decent BC and really start to turn this thing into what it should be. So that's what I went with. Meant it all happened a little bit of a rush. I had a 6.5 Creedmoor I wasn't using, pulled the barrel off that, and I've got a Howard short action with a light and trigger in it and a bolt knob on it. That was that bit done. Went shopping for a barrel. Uh, weren't gonna get, wasn't gonna get one made. Wanted to try and do it in what we could get off the shelf. Found this Krieger in a one and 7.7 .7 twist, um, which we've turned into a 26 inch barrel. Very good barrels, obviously. One and seven, I was thinking between one and seven, one and eight was probably just gonna cut it. One and seven's probably ideal. Um, one and 7.7, .7, someone designed that, not me, uh, but okay. That sounds like it's gonna work really well. Especially as I'm expecting around 3,000 3, feet per second. So that was the barrel. Simple, straightforward, set it up, standard chamber, just push the throat forward a little bit. And I've explained how to do that with getting a bullet, setting it up, measuring it, work out where it should be. That's exactly what I did. I set it up to run just on the 40th hour jump. It can run a little more, it can run a little less. So that's what I set it up with. Um, and put a muzzle brake on it. A little bit what I do with all of them. Not needed for a 2250, of course, but listen, it isn't about my ego. I'm not trying to show I'm stronger than the other guys and can deal more recoil or less recoil. It's about trying to make the best shooter I can, the best precision shooter I can. And I always find there's a little bit in my muzzle brake, so that's what I did there. A bit of keeping the dust off the ground, but really doing it all, gonna do it properly. If nothing else, make it look proper too. So muzzle brake up the front. That's just a five out by 24 thread, but that'll set up, that'll come up very simply. The back with the chassis, we used an MDT um, magazine, just a five shot magazine. Not that I use the magazine. I actually have in that um, just a little plate to make sure they can single feed properly. So it's just a little Perspex plate that I've got cut in there. So they single feed simply. <coughs> um, MDT grip, standard down the back here. Just got one of my bag riders on the back here. 
So I did have to drill and tap the aluminium um, block in the centre of the buttstock there. So I would suggest to MDT to put some holes in there, tapped holes in there. I can't see any negatives to it. It lets people attach what they want to the back of it. And to turn it from more hunting into more precision, the bag rider does a really good job of that and bolted straight up simple. So once again, all very simple. On the front, I have one of my, wanted to do it as thoroughly as possible once again. So my component A in my bipod system, this is the medium height component D, um, which is not done by design. I hadn't measured anything. I've got three different ones. I've got a low one, a medium one, and a high one for different depth to barrel configurations. And I did that just like a customer would. I measured my barrel center line. I measured to, to the base of the where, the where the this component D is going to bolt onto. Worked out what it was and component D lined up perfectly. It doesn't need to be centered. In this case, it is centered, more an aesthetic thing, but centered. And really, that really turns it into a precision rifle. I should go to up at the top here. I have a 40 MOA rail um, on this thing with my air attack base and then the Night Force NX8 scope. Um, it's their second level of scope, so it's a little more budget conscious. Um, doesn't quite have the elevation of the big one. It's only a 30 mil tube and a 50 mil objective. Um, to be truthful, really like shooting through the big ones. Really like looking through the big ones. Something I forget about very quickly. This one's in second focal plane. I will do a full review on it, but I was really wrapped with it. Work really well. They're not precise. All all the the guts of them, the way they work, all that sort of stuff is the same as their top stuff. Um, and like I said, really in, in using it, uh, forget where I'm at. It's like I'm behind one of the attackers. This one's actually set up, the, the whole length of everything is set up more for Sam because this gun will be for Sam. So I was a little bit closed on the on the eye relief side of things, but that's really, I'm flexible enough to do that side of things. And it shot very, very well. We'll get into how it shot in a little bit, but I suppose as an overview, like I said, super happy. The round, the 22 to 50, like I said, there's other things that have gone with, but I really like the old fella. Um, and I, I went through the process, which I normally do. I set up five cartridges, sometimes four, sometimes five. This was five cartridges at different power levels running the AD, ADI AR2209, which I think is the Hodgins 4350. Um, but it's the 2209 is what I used um, and then went out and shot those. No scope on it or anything, just to check pressures. I really found only a very, very little difference between the lowest one and the highest one. So we ended up over 30 grains of that powder. Um, and that was well, at the highest one. This it still wasn't showing pressure signs, but it was starting to put that primer getting to an OK place. So that's what I went out and shot with. I would say this primer had a bit of a room, bit of room to move, but I was expecting around 3,000 feet per second, um, and as a guess, um, which it was a guess, there wasn't much data on this combination. But anyway, that's what we went out with. So we went out to a shoot. Um, good to have, mate. Okay. So let's. Well, let's see, eh? Let's just go straight into the target. Okay. So it should be damn close. Ready? You ready? Yep. Right. Three o'clock. Quarter of a target right. Okay. Cool. What'd I get? Just uh, 3,095. Yeah, okay. And it was right, so really probably 2 MOA. So that was a good call. 12 MOA. It's actually 11 on what I got here. 11 okay. MI elevation. Ready it. Hit, 3 o'clock. Edge of plate. Edge of plate. Yep. Okay. On there. Okay, let's go one more. More wind than there seems to be. Yeah, okay. Just left a center. Yeah. Cool. That was the one MOA adjustment. Okay. Got about one and a half MOA, I think. Yep. So let's go for a little bit of a group. And three, uh, 397, so nearly 3100. Yeah. 
Just below centre. Not bad. Yeah. Three oh eight three. Just one. left to centre, yep. We'll do five shots, eight. Radio. On plate. That's what I missed. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> on, nice top, on top of that little lot. That's a nice little game. So one was off, you could blow me just about. Yeah. Okay, well, good. And 370, 3070. Okay. Okay, well, let's still get our big target set up at, eh? Okay. That's, um, Proved really nicely there. <sighs> right here. So we're going out the long one? Going out the long one. Right here. I'll zoom. Let's see how we go with this. Right here. So it's 36 minutes of elevation. Okay. 8 minutes of wind. See where we go. Like. Okay, good to go. Hit. Nice. On plate. <laughs> it's a nice big hug. It's for a little bullet. Four yeah. miles off paint off that soft target. It did, didn't it? Okay. Yeah. Crowd, little crowd there, isn't it? Okay. But that's over at um, nine or eight thirty, four inches from the edge of the plate. Uh, I'd say the same spot. I really couldn't see it change. Okay. Oh no, but dirty, in it. Somewhere down there in that little spot where the first group started. Okay, I'll stop then, okay? Yeah, okay, awesome. Well, it's all in the same area. Cool. Okay, mate. Okay. So 3100 what we're settling into. Okay. That's pretty good speed for a as I said, this is a bit more set up for Sam, but we find in our little combination, especially when we're starting things off, if there's quirks or bits and pieces to deal with. Now I'd done the running in, I'd, I'd basically put some patches through it when I was checking my powder loads to start off with. So that was done. But still, when you go out, you don't know what you're going to run into on target. So we tend to find it's better if I do that bit, I do the exploratory bit, get it settled, and then get Sam onto the rifle. So that's exactly what we did. You saw exactly that process. I went through at 600 yards, then went out to the 1200 yards or 1194, got on there very simply as you saw, and really stopped because like I said, set up for Sam and that's where I really wanted to put her by this one and let it perform for her. So you saw what it shot like. It is a very, very easy cartridge to use in the way of recoil. It is very nice and the type of one that Sam really does like to and enjoys to shoot. So it shot really well, as you saw, hitting that plate. That was just three mil mild steel out there, so it was one of our ELR targets. I figured this 22 pill was going to not go through, and most of them it would pass through, a 6.5 Creedmoor, that sort of stuff, would have passed through there. I wouldn't have used that plate in there. But this one, <laughs> I felt if I'd used the hard steel with the little bullets, it gets harder to see, and we weren't sure on our condition, where the conditions were gonna have. So as you saw with that three mil steel, these were really punching, which works really well for seeing, pops off a nice hunk of paint because it moves the steel so much. I can still hammer it back, but it's right in the edge of where we're just about to go through. So still carrying a decent amount of energy out there. But that's why they were so easy to see and something to keep in mind for, for your target shooting, that lighter steel, when it bends more, pops off the paint, you've got nice big images versus um, little tiny splatters on hard steel. So shot, Sam really liked it, shot really well. It's one of the ones that um, worked nicely for both of us. And listen, overall, 
the rifle, uh, listen, great. Um, it really has turned into a, uh, well, it's a, a proper little precision package. Looked forward to stretching it out. Um, everything on it, I was really happy with. Really happy with my bipod system at the front here. How neat that ended up, how nice it looked. The, the brake, all that sort of stuff, means the rifle shoots really well. The NS8 on the top of it, um, listen, like I said, the, the, my main comment, and I will do a full review on the thing and, and show you what the glass looks like, but my main comment is it really disappears a little bit for me in the way of, not disappears, it's um, it, it really like being behind any one of the, the tier one scopes that I use in the way of just forget, just forget about it, like if everything's working really well. Um, then you don't know anything's different at all. Well, that's exactly what it was like. Um, chassis wise, which I suppose is the, the core of what this all came from, it's very nicely machined. It works really well. In me, for precision stuff, it's a little more for the smaller cartridges, um, but it built really well, really happy. I'd like to see some holes in the back here, but overall, yeah, listen, it's a win. It's a big tick. Work really nicely and very nice looking. The um, plastic covers on the outside, the aluminium on the inside, um, ends up with, it's nice and light. I'm sure they've got the weight listed on their site where the weight isn't something that concerns me, but it's decently strong and to the overall look and feel of that sort of stuff, wrapped with. Um, and this rifle, I think it's going to slip neatly into probably the top of um, Sam's fa favorites. Certainly shot like that, feels like that, looks like that. Um, we're wrapped with it. So anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let us know any comments, questions, or thoughts. Um, and otherwise, um, we'll catch you next time.